Good morning and welcome to Missoula Real Estate Today. This is Denny Bedard. Missoula Real Estate Today is presented by Diane Beck of Windermere Real Estate. Diane's been working with buyers and sellers in the Missoula market for over 25 years and shares her insights on the local housing market. Along with her trusted partners, Diane provides complete service for your real estate transaction and brings us guests who provide useful information on industry-related topics and trends. And now, Missoula Real Estate Today on News Talk KGVO. Hey, welcome on into Missoula Real Estate Today. We sure appreciate you being with us this weekend and every weekend. Presented by Diane Beck of Windermere Real Estate, who uh, paid us a visit last week, and she said, well, let's get somebody else from Windermere Real Estate to come on back to the show. Leslie Weatherby, Windermere Real Estate and Old Sawmill District. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Thanks, Denny. Been Good a to mighty be here. Lo- Been a mighty long time. But, it has uh, been. Probably because you're so busy with this whole thing, right? <laughs> this, among other things. And, that for sure. <laughs> well, let's um, let's jump right in with a refresher course, since you have not been on in a long time. What is... Uh, the umbrella. What is the old sawmill district and, and what all does that entail? The old sawmill district is a former lumber mill. Right. It was uh, started as the Polly's Lumber Mill and then was purchased by several different companies. And um, it was had been, aban- it had been abandoned for about 25 years. So uh, my husband and I and Kevin Mitty have been working on this project. They started out with the land project and they it was quite a process, but going through the, the cleanup, which took many, many years. Right. We've been working on this project for just about 17 years now. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and basically recreating it to bring life back to this area and making a great place to live, work, and play in Missoula. We're right in the heart of Missoula and along the river. And so we just we needed to bring this place back to life. You're a, you're a long-time Missoula gal. Do you do you kind of remember, because I, I sort of do as a kid, being a long-time Missoula guy, what, what all that looked like back in its its day? Oh, yes, I did. I was born and raised here. Me too. And, um, yeah, and so it's like I remember riding bikes down the big hill to the Big T yeah. and, you know, skating on the Little Pond, which later became known as Silver Lagoon. And uh, it's just, what a change. So many people say they remember seeing the teepee burners out there. Yes, and, yes. yeah. All the pollution that came from the site. <laughs> <laughs> Which we didn't know much about or care much about when we were kids way back then, you know. Right. And yeah. then a lot of people will remember it as the parking area for the stadium, the Osprey Games. Sure. When um, when we first got control of the property, the city did not have an area for parking for the games. So we allowed them to go in and park during those games. So that was when it was still, there was a lot of of foundations and old buildings and stuff out there. Yeah. So, yeah. And that has become the old sawmill district. And I was, I was talking to a guest about it. I'm, I'm talking about the big picture now, what it is now, uh, Pauly Square and, and the businesses and, and uh, Cambium Place and, and soon to be Sawyer Place, all of that. And we'll, we'll break that down by component. But I was talking to, um, I think it was Linda McCarthy from the Missoula Downtown yes. Association on this show a few weeks back. And it, it came up during the course of the, conversation and I said you know what I think I like the the best about it Linda is that it looks like this separate little town right in the middle of a town (laughs) yes that's we kind of our goal was to create a pedestrian village our goal is to have people not get in their cars very much and be able to walk around and you know, we want to have a lot of businesses that will service the residents and people who work there, but it's also a five to 10 minute walk to downtown. Um, my husband and I are living there now. We absolutely love it. It's so great to be able to walk downtown and meet friends for dinner. We will have, we have the Dog and Bicycle Bakery Cafe there now. We will have the Sawmill Grill and um, there's just going to be a lot of different businesses there, but that was right. the idea. It's a, its own little village. Missoula Real Estate Today, presented by Diane Beck of Windermere Real Estate, and our guest, Leslie Weatherby with Windermere Real Estate and Old Sawmill District. And, Leslie, let's go ahead and uh, talk about each component. Polly Square, Cambium Place, and the the Sawyer. And I, I think when we first started talking with you uh, about it several years ago, I know it's been, it's been you said it's been 17 years in the making, but when we first started visiting about it several years ago, Polly Square was, I guess, at the forefront of that project. So so let's start there. Is that everything that that you imagined it would be? Oh, it's so exciting. It uh, we started construction on that project in uh, uh, let's see June of 2015 and it was completed in August of 2016. Yeah, and we're on the 4-year anniversary then. Yes. I mean, yeah, wow. yeah, well, 3 years since they uh, moved in, but 4 years since we started construction, right? right? And um, that was the 
the most exciting feeling in the world to me was to watch those peop first people moving in because we'd been planning this for so long. And, you know, people had to really have a vision to be able to look at that and believe that we were going to build this. And then what was so cool is it actually came out the way we planned it. <laughs> so all four buildings are complete now. There are, are a total of 73 condos and um, we only have seven left available for sale. So we seven have out of 73. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's exciting. You, and it's, it's oh, just ahead, a I'm wonderful sorry. sense of community. Uh, people are loving living there. They all get together and a very social group. They'll get together once a month and go, you know, meet up at a brewery or some restaurant. Yeah. They do a lot of uh, potlucks in the courtyard, you know, evening fire pit, cocktail. Really fun. And you, you see neighbors helping neighbors all the time. And I looked out and I thought, wait, that's not the right person on that deck. And then I realized, oh, she's just watering her plants for her neighbor. <laughs> so it's just really cool to see. So if you were to see one of the seven that were still uh, remaining, you walked in, what what would you see at Polly Square? So they are beautiful. You walk in, they're very open floor plans. Uh, they each have two bedrooms, two baths. All two and two. A lot of them have a parking one parking space in the parking garage. The ones that don't have a reserved parking space next to the building. Um, nice, very nice finishes, and um, just a very comfortable. People just they they love the the feel of it. It's a very mm -hmm. warm, comfortable feeling. Lots of windows. And you have Poly Square A, B, C, and D. Differences, Correct. similarities. There are. You know, <laughs> we changed things as we went along, and um, so each building is a little bit different. We didn't want them to look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. We didn't want a co cookie cutter mold down there. So there's changes in each building, and um, each one has taken on their own personality. But it's a really great group all together. A nice community. Uh, and size wise, as as far as uh, each each unit, each A, B, C, and D, uh, all pretty. Similar in size, height, structure, and everything? So there are, each one is a little bit different. Okay. So the ones that I have left available range from about 900 and, I would say 940 square feet to 1,100 square feet. We do have some larger ones, but those are all sold. So, mm -hmm. you know, we had a really great variety, and some people like the really small ones, some people want a middle size, and some wanted the really big ones. So it was, uh, it was great to see. And, and what kind of reaction are you getting when, when people come in and see them? I, I would assume that they, they do a pretty good job uh, selling themselves, but if they just sold themselves, they probably wouldn't need a, <laughs> a realtor of such yourself. What, what kind of reaction do you typically see when, when people come in and, and take a tour? It's really fun because they, you know, their eyes open wide and they're like, wow, we didn't know this was down here. And, uh, or some people will say, well, we've, been, we've been wanting to see these for so long. And uh, it's really great. Uh, some people will say, we, gosh, our friends are coming. We want to find a place for them or parents are coming or people are saying, gosh, we want to downsize. You know, we're just uh, or we're changing plans. We're going to be here somewhere and somewhere else in the winter. So we've got a real mix of what's going on. So, yeah, it's really fun to see the reaction and see how much people really, really like them. Three levels, four levels. So buildings A and C are four stories okay. and buildings B and D are three stories. And, and all offer underground parking? Yes. Elevator so, service? And yes, elevator service to all. There's a few. Um, we just didn't have quite enough parking spaces, so there are a few units that do not have parking spaces in the parking garage. That also helps get their cost a little bit lower. And then, um, But they do have a reserved parking space outside. Some people are totally fine with that. They don't mind. Some are only here in the summer, so that doesn't bother them. A few others don't have a car. They just bike everywhere. And so that's no problem. I think my reaction, <clears throat> just looking at it and hear you describe it, it, it's almost something that you would typically see in a in a crowded, congested, large city type environment or area. And so the opposite <clears throat> of that, when when you walk out the front door, the back door, uh, wh whatever you do. Yes, it's got a real urban feel to it, and that was exactly. our goal when we planned these this development. Is we wanted to bring urban living to the heart of Missoula and do it in the right way. And so the way that was, we worked with the Missoula Redevelopment Agency and um, the zoning office, um, Office of Community Development on the zoning part of it. And just, you know, making sure that we had, they really wanted to see high density and it was the perfect area for it because it makes more sense to only have one car per couple or even to not have a car and be able to walk to those places. And everything is just so close. You know, we've got grocery stores, uh, the Good Food Store is seven blocks away. Fresh Market is just yeah. across the river. Orange Street Food Farm, or I guess 
yeah, it's still at Ward Street Food Farm. Mm-hmm. It's just the other way a few blocks, and it just is so convenient. When when you say high density, did, did you have a certain uh, requirement, a certain quota to make, or uh, what was that? What, I mean, it, it sounds like you got a lot of them. You we said, do. What, 72, 73? 73, right. 73. That In sounds that like, like plenty. It sounds like you, you satisfied just about anybody's expectations, I would think. But was that a little bit uh, difficult to figure out, okay, what do they mean by high density and what are we going to do? You know, they actually wanted us to be higher density than that. <laughs> I knew you were going to say uh, that. We just decided we we were a little uncertain about that. So it was, um, we probably could have gone higher, but we just, we wanted to keep it at a reasonable. So it still looks really comfortable and doesn't look like there are a bunch of skyscrapers down there. Sure. So, and as we move on through the further development, you'll see that the different areas, you know, there it's still high density, but maybe it's not as dense as what's going on right there. Right. You started to mention uh, a couple of the, the businesses. I'd like you to talk a little bit more about uh, some or all of those, if you could, that are, that are located there as, uh, you know, and, and what all they offer. Yeah, so um, we have Dog and Bicycle Bakery Cafe, which is open at 6 in the morning, breakfast and lunch. It's great, great cup of coffee and kombucha. And then we have um, in Cambium Place, which is our building just to the east of that, that is a mixed-use building which has commercial and residential in it. And those are all for lease. So they are high-end apartments for lease. And then the commercial space, we have um, C3 Work Lounge, Mm -hmm. which is a co-working lounge. And that is just doing very, very well. It's amazing. It's the first real actual co-working lounge in Missoula. It has been incredibly successful. People are really excited about it. It's amazing the number of people that are there. There are people that have uh, dedicated, or I guess private offices, And then some who have dedicated desks. So those are their spaces all the time and no one else can use them. And then there's what we call the freelancer that can come in and sit anywhere. There's uh, the freelancer plus has 24 hour access. The 20, the freelancer has just, I believe it's from eight to five. And then there's, you know, some that can come in occasionally. There's also punch passes available so that you just use it once in a while. It's also a great option for people who are traveling and they need some place to come in and work for a few hours or someplace to hold a meeting. We do lease out that space okay. for different events in uh, our conference. So, so it's kind of like too. a very, very nice business center that you would see at a nice hotel. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Although, although, although much cooler. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's <clears throat> modeled after the WeWork concept. Okay. So it's, uh, it's really exciting. It's great to see. And there's a lot yeah. of energy when you go in and see. And it's great people for a great place for people to meet and, and kind of throw ideas off of each other. So the C3 stands for Connect, create, or Connect, Collaborate, Create. And uh, so that's just the whole philosophy behind it. And, and you need not be residents of, no. of Old Sawmill District. This no, is for a, everybody, just like the, the Dog and Bicycle Cafe. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there are a yeah. lot of people who are there who are not residents. Some are, right. but, um, but most of them yeah. are not. Yeah. And then we have Brio Fitness on second floor, and that is our neighborhood gym but it is open to the public as well so we have a lot of people who are not residents of old sawmill district that belong okay. to that too and we've got a summer special going on right now through june i think it's 99 dollars for the entire summer so um it's uh, it's just a great facility really really nice equipment they're all dual station equipment we've got um, cardio equipment we have uh, weight machines we have an extra s- or w- like a room for classes mm-hmm. we have a lot of different trainers and uh, and class instructors so it's really great great views from up there too <laughs> <laughs> missoula real estate today is presented by diane beck of windermere real estate we have leslie weatherby with uh, windermere real estate in the old sawmill district and we covered Polly square pretty good leslie Let, let's move on and talk more about cambium place the the, the specific location and, uh, and all the way it differs from Polly Square. Yes. Yeah, so um, two more businesses that are in, that are in Cambium Place. So these are, those are all in Cambium Place. And the other okay. one is Edward Jones and then um, ATG. So ATG ah. is a tech company that they are, they are on the third and fourth floor. So we're really excited to have them. They add a lot of energy to the place. So that's really <laughs> exciting. And then we have 69 high-end apartments for rent. 69. They're beautiful. And the amenity space is unbelievable. Nothing like it in Missoula. So you come in, you have a beautiful lobby that you can just hang out, relax, nice seating. And then you go into the great room, which is open to the second floor. Huge, beautiful fireplace. Just wow. an amazing place to hang out, relax. We have social events in there. And then we have a chef's kitchen 
which if you decide you want to have a cocktail party or a dinner party and your apartment isn't quite big enough, you just reserve that space. We had some people hold Thanksgiving dinner in there. Others did Christmas parties. We've had trunk shows. I think there's one lady every week who has her mahjong friends over and they just have a great time. It's just, it's so much fun. We've had Super Bowl parties and, you know, our big plan is to have the TV TVs going for Grizz games on the away games and it's just really great. And then there's also a conference room that they can use as well. And then when you go into the apartments, yeah. there's also um, a beautiful courtyard. So um, we have community gardens there, really two gas fire pits, a water feature, uh, outdoor grills, just really, really nice space. It's beautiful. And then with the apartments, they're very open as well, open floor plans. Uh -huh. um, they, we have a couple studios. We have one bedroom, one bath, two bedroom, one bath, two bedroom, two bath. So it's really, um, and people are loving it. We're about 50% yeah. full. And I think our completion date, we had a few people move in in the fall and then we finished the building in January. So it's going really well. People are loving it. Underground parking as well. Room to roam in there, pretty decent square footage. Uh, yes, it's it. They, I think they range. You know, I think our largest ones are around twelve hundred square feet. Oh, that's so. a lot. It is. Yeah, they're really nice. People are loving it. And um, as, as you're driving, you're, you're, your old sawmill just like Polly Square is essentially on Wyoming Street, that's right? Correct. So Do I Wy have that? Yes, Wyoming Street is the main street that goes through our yes. development. Yes. And it is it is now a connector between Orange Street and Russell Street. Correct. And when they're complete with the completion of the Russell Street um, construction and expansion there, they are going to put a stoplight there. Yeah. Eventually, there will be a stoplight at at Orange and Craig Lane as well. I'd heard that. Craig, yeah, it turns I'd heard that Wyoming. this week. I knew about the the light at Wyoming. Yes. And Russell, which to me makes a heck of a lot of sense. Yes. I had to stop and think about that one at Craig Lane because uh, you know it's right at. It's right at kind of at the foot of the Orange Street Bridge there. Mm -hmm. And when, I'll tell you who told me that, and he would know, uh, Shane Klaus, who owns Pink Grizzly Nursery on Russell Street, right at that intersection of Russell and Wyoming, said, said the traffic light's going to be Wyoming. I said, yeah, I knew this. He's also uh, pretty sure it's going to be one at Craig Lane. Yes. Which, for those who, who don't know, Craig Lane is, um, uh, well, it, it has a pretty significant incline, uh, decline, shall we say, <laughs> because if you're on Orange Street, that's the one that lets you down into the McCormick Park Osprey Baseball Stadium. Right. And they're going to put a traffic light there? Yes. And Craig Lane turns into Wyoming Street at the yeah. train trestle. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> some people get a little confused about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're having fun doing radio roadmaps here and uh, <laughs> kind of getting off. I guess what I started to ask is that Polly Square is officially on Wyoming Street. Can be in place the same? Also on Wyoming. It's just <clears throat> right next door to it. Side by side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The next block. Okay. And yeah. you said uh, right now that's about uh, half occupied. For the, the, the yeah, half we're, we're actually, or... we have, we're uh, almost 50% occupied right now with people living there. And we have another 10 or so leases signed up that people okay. will be moving in in the next month. Same question so I asked you. So over. Yeah. S same question I asked you about Poly Square. Is the, did it meet your expectations? Oh, my or? gosh. So much more. It's just, you walk in and it just is an incredible, it's funny because people walk in and they say, I don't feel like I'm in Missoula. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's really exciting to see. It's beautiful. We'd love to give people tours and, and yeah. um, you know, we have a leasing office there that is staffed um, every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I know the, the history of why you call it Polly's Square. What about the Cambium thing? So Cambium, that took a lot of uh, discussion <laughs> as well. And we finally came up with the Cambium is the ring of growth between the tree and the bark. And so that's why we decided it's, it's also called the next generation of growth. So we decided it was very fitting because it was something that was mm -hmm. completely different and it is, you know, it's taken a, a whole step up and, yeah. and really bringing something new to Missoula. The amenity space, nobody puts amenity space like this in it. And, and I think people thought we were crazy at first because it, it, there's just so much of it, but everyone loves it and they use it. I never knew uh, until you told me a couple of years ago what a cambium was. So <laughs> that was educational for me. So yeah. cambium place. All right. There's a. Uh, a number of lease options available there. Let's move on to the the Sawyer. I know that's still a, a fairly a, a, a fair amount of work to do yet. Um, it's it's student housing. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there were were there certain expectations that 
the old sawmill district project would uh, would in, include housing like this? Was it was it difficult to make it blend in so seamlessly and and look like you know a natural a natural extension, I guess, of Polly Square and Cambium Place? You know, there was no requirement that we had to do, it, but that was always always our goal. We want yeah. this to be a really healthy and vibrant neighborhood. And in order to do that, we thought we needed to have all ages and all aspects. So we had always wanted to have a student project, and then we will also have a 55-plus project and everything in between. And the funny thing is is that the student project is at one end. The 55-plus is at the other end, and everything else literally is in, <laughs> in between. <laughs> so the student project is beautiful. It's the Sawyer, mm-hmm. um, it is construction will be finished. July 17th, which we're very excited. I yeah, just took oh, a tour of it. knocking on the door, aren't we? Yes, we're yeah, down to wonderful. just a few weeks. Yeah. Took a tour of it yesterday, and oh my gosh, it is just beautiful. It's really coming along. Um, once the 17th happens, our crew will be really busy getting all the, the furniture in because they'll be fur- fully furnished apartments for the students. And they're set up in a pod style. So they each have their own bedroom and bathroom, and then they share a kitchen and living room. And so there'll be two bedroom, three bedroom and four bedroom units available. And then there's a lot of really nice uh, amenity space in there as well. A lot of different study areas. Mm -hmm. We have print centers. We have a, um, I think it's called uh, health and it's mind, mind health, mind body room. Yeah, so it's like okay. you can do yoga classes, whatever, you know, uh, really great stuff in there. And then there's an amazing space on the top floor, fourth floor, that has a beautiful view of downtown where there's uh, some game rooms and there's, you know, just a place for them to have a lot of social, a nice deck up there. We have a pool table in the lobby area. It's just, it's really going to be a great space for them. And um, there's quiet hours, so it'll be, you know, it's really helping promote their study yeah. habits. And uh, it's just beautiful. And the students that have come to see it just love it. Oh, no so, doubt. Yeah, but they're really a, excited about it. But you got a waiting it. list brewing on that it's, deal. We're, we're getting a lot of activity. Walk me through that one more time. <laughs> you've, you've, <laughs> okay. got, you've got, uh, you described it as, as like a pod area. So So I'm living in, let's say, a two bedroom unit mm-hmm. and then next door to me is a three bedroom unit and then maybe next door or across from me some way is a is a four bedroom unit and so those are my my bedrooms my my bath and whatnot but then I share so uh, in in the <laughs> two bedroom unit there are just two people who there's okay so each bedroom has their own private bath and then they share a kitchen and living room so there's a kitchen living room and two bedrooms in that unit. Okay. And, and two baths. Uh, okay. And then in the four bedrooms, they're, you know, in the corners, and then the living area is central to it. So each person has their own bedroom and bathroom, and then they share a kitchen and living room. Got so you. there's no more than four people yeah. sharing a Boy, did I miss that one by a mile. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking, this, this could not possibly end. No. <laughs> I don't care what Weatherby says. This cannot end well. If, if no, this. we don't have everyone sharing one kitchen. <laughs> I didn't mean everyone. I just I thought okay. She yeah. did she just say that that several of the dwelling spaces are going to shut down. I should have I should have known better. <laughs> Thank you for clearing yes, that up for yes. me. I, I've got it now. And then they have a really great courtyard also. With this is really cool. It's got a water feature <laughs> in the middle and then a fire pit that goes around it. Wow, it's gorgeous. Yeah. So and that volleyball is volleyball area, volleyball pit. Yeah, that's called the Sawyer. Sawyer. You mm-hmm. expect completion in a, in a few weeks, and then people would be able to move in in August. Yeah. Yeah. So by mid-August, we'll be ready. We're giving ourselves ourselves thirty days to get all the furniture in and um, pretty much get our systems going. And right. and so it's and everything is right on schedule. It's just yeah. so exciting to just see. in time for schooling. Yes. Yeah. That was the goal. <laughs> and do you do you have to be a University of Montana student? You know, you do not. Yeah. Um, we can't discriminate and sure. because it's privately held. Um, it's not part of the university. We can't discriminate against that. So if someone did want to, you know, they have to go through our background checks and our credit checks and and uh, the whole the whole series of right. of uh, vetting. And but they would not necessarily have to be a student to live there. Okay. This is Mizzou. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. They do have mm. to honor the quiet hours. Yeah. Yeah. The code of conduct. Yes. 
A special thank you to some of uh, Diane Beck's marketing partners that helped bring you Missoula Real Estate today. Rob Fleming with Man Mortgage, Miles Link of Opportunity Bank of Montana, and Carol Blodgett from MakeItMissoula.com. We are with Leslie Weatherby of Windermere Real Estate and the Old Sawmill District, which we've been talking about a lot. We broke it down there, Leslie. We got in the Pauley Square and the Cambium Place and Sawyer. <clears throat> are there um, are there specific features or facets of this whole project that that you are especially proud of? I mean, we can I can tell you're proud of the entire thing, but is there just a couple things that go, yeah? <laughs> you know. Um... I think that when the first time that I walked into the the lobby in the great room, especially of Cambium Place, it was just like, oh, my gosh, this is yeah. unbelievable. You know, because you expect to see something like this in a big city. Sure. And not here. And so it is it it just makes me really proud. And I'm so excited about it. And I'm really excited about the future development that we have going on, too. So we are in the process of planning additional commercial buildings um, there's room for a couple more blocks of commercial buildings. So we're really excited about bringing more types of businesses. We want a like a hair salon. We Kay. want to have um, there, we want to have a neighborhood market down there. We want to have uh, just a child care center. That is something that we're working on and we feel that there's a huge need for. And so um, we know that just the employees alone there will be able to fill quite a bit of it, but we also, I think our plan is to try to reserve a certain uh, portion of that for um, uh, assistance, you know, families who need assistance. And so that is that is part of the plan that we're working on. Okay. So that's really exciting. Yeah. Um, and then we have our townhome project that we're going yes. to be starting on soon. That's going to be on the north side of Wyoming, just to the west of the green belt. So there's a green belt that divides. It goes from the trail up to the pavilion. And it divides kind of the commercial area and mixed-use area from the residential area. This explains a lot to me because when I drive down there, I, I see that area. Yes. And and when when you first uh, when we first started talking about this and and met, that was that was sort of how I had I guess Polly Square pictured is that that all or, or part of that was there and it's not. It's on the south side of the Wyoming Street. And and every every time I drive by, I kind of oh, I wonder where where what are we doing with that? Yeah, and so that's we're, townhomes. It'll be townhomes. We will have wow. a few single family there too, but it's really exciting. I've got quite a few people who are interested in just waiting for us to get plans completed and get them out to it. They're ready to sign up. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's it that's for the people who don't really want to be in quite um, as tight quarters. Sure. So they'll have a little bit of yard. We're planning it so that all the yard care will still be taken care of. So okay. people can just enjoy and not have yeah. to deal with that. Yeah. You kind of got that design in your head. You're thinking how many yeah, units and how big and, and all We started with the architects on that. And we're just refining things right now before we can really get it out there. Yeah. So I think that that's something that's going to be very successful. Yeah. And um, I'm excited to see. And it'll be fun working on another new project again. How about a, how about a tree name or a lumber mill name? Have you figured out what you're going <laughs> We haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> well, come on. We got to get creative again. <laughs> get that Google going. <laughs> uh, Leslie Weatherby. Whoops. Because I almost fall over here. Leslie Weatherby <laughs> with Windermere Real Estate in the old Sawmill District. And uh, believe it or not, Leslie, we're almost out of time. But before I let you go... Uh, uh, contact information, uh, how do they reach you, how do they find you, if they'd like to take a look at something, uh, all of that stuff. Sure. So you can call our office at 406-203-3015. And, uh, again, that's 406-203-3015. Um, you can also go onto our website mm -hmm. at oldsawmilldistrict.com. We have links to all of our projects on there. And um, we can set up tours. We can, you know, just sit down and talk to you about what future plans are, you know, and if you're just, somebody's just curious and they want to want to see more about what the development is. Yeah. And, um, and I would, I would assume that would include people too, who might be interested in a, in a future commercial, a business yes, uh, within the, absolutely uh, the entire. Yeah. So they can, well. can just call me at that number. Um, we have a leasing agent who's handling Cambium. I've got assistants in my office as well who can help out, but yes. So they should just call me at two zero three three zero one five. Or go to our website, and there's a place where you can contact us that way as well. And, um, yeah, it's just it's exciting. Great to see you. Terrific job, as always. Thanks for Thank coming by. Thank you very by. much. Thanks for having me.
Thank you for listening to Missoula Real Estate Today. We hope you found this morning's information to be helpful. If you have any suggested topics for any future Missoula Real Estate Today programs or any questions about buying or selling, contact Diane Beck with Windermere Real Estate. Email Diane Beck at Realtor.com or visit her website, homesinmissoula.com. That's homesinmissoula.com. We'll see you next time on Missoula Real Estate Today.